Hello, and welcome to the Bankers Tech Talk video series, diving into the world of fintech. I'm Joy McKnight, Deputy and Technology Editor at The Banker, and I'm joined by Russell King, CEO and founder of Paycasso, which aims to safeguard finance using facial recognition. Russell, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. So what do you think are the big pain points when it comes to digital identity in a digital world? Trust, first one. Um, I think the challenge for all financial services and generally other industries is what does the trust model look like in digital identity? Um, and it's become a crowded space, a lot of interest in it, uh, understandably so. Um, beyond trust, it's implementation of solutions that support a trust environment. Um, and financial services as a business must take things carefully, um, not simply from the sort of digital transformation perspective, but equally what is the efficacy of a given proposition in sure. digital identity. Okay, and so how does Paycaso really uh, address that risk, uh, especially around like impersonation, fraud, um, and also, you know, just digital identity in general? So our proposition uh, was identity is considered three aspects, something we have, something we know, and something we are. Um, we took the position that something we know, if we know it, the likelihood is, those with nefarious intent likely know it as well because it's based upon data, bureau information, last mortgage payment, last address. Uh, so we looked at identity from an issuance perspective. Uh, the government give us a photo ID. There's nothing of a greater trust level that's independent uh, that we could find to build a digital identity proposition from. So it's the combination of a photo ID uh, that is issued by government, not just any photo ID, and combining facial recognition into a transactional model that verifies the ID being presented by a user is valid and remains untampered with, and that the person presenting the ID is the valid holder through facial recognition of comparison of their live face with the photo or images on or in the ID. Um, by conducting that sort of transaction, you are delivering a level of trust. What is the level of trust? It's a risk-based model, and that, in my opinion, is how financial services and all businesses operate. What is my risk? If I understand it, I can manage it. Okay. Um, and how do you think an e-identity solution could really help uh, reduce the risks in cryptocurrency? So uh, we have a couple of clients who are paying close attention, who provide payment services, cashier services to um, FX and the gaming industry. And as a natural segue, cryptocurrency is part of that proposition or in that environment. Um, there is, without question, a level of interest from the exchanges themselves in providing a level of trust in this environment. Uh, I think everybody recognizes in order to move mainstream, we've got to come out of the woods and hiding and corners. Um, and a classic proposition around data models just doesn't apply anymore. Um, we see data breaches on a daily basis. Um, and I think certainly from my experience with regulators and the C-suite at financial institutions, we have got to look at alternative models. And uh, e-identity is absolutely a model that stands up to inspection um, and ultimately leaves decision making in the hands of those who should be making the decisions, the institutions. It's not up to us to make a determination whether this meets a set of policies and procedures from tier one bank or cryptocurrency uh, exchange. Um, I think that we will see a level of regulation um, and why should we not see the same levels of regulatory construct that we do in regular currency transactions? Um, and that will drive e-identity because we are now seeing regulators who are publishing updated guidance 
to institutions on how they can apply solutions such as Picasso's with a degree of confidence that there is no regulator who's going to say, Joy, you've absolutely hit that on the nose, well done, we approve of that. Um, what they must do is give guidance on what is an acceptable process uh, to consider deploying that would meet a level of compliance. Um, so we are seeing that, and I think that will contribute quite well to the cryptocurrency community. Excellent. Thank you so much for your insights, Russell. My pleasure. Thank you for having me.